Hi guys, this is our anniversary, one year living in, in France. And um, I went to Biocop and I got 100% végétal au riz, chocolat. So this is how vegans um, <laughs> celebrate. Nous sommes vegans, we are vegans. Yeah, végétalienne. And then I also got this. Instead of champagne, because we don't drink either, I got mm -mm -mm, cassis, apple, uh, fizzy bubbles. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, big ears. It's still smoking. Oh, nice colour. Smells good too. Is Thank that you. enough? Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. We're sitting by the Garonne and I just saw a kingfisher. And earlier when we first arrived, there was a cow drinking from it's the nice. river. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry, I already had some. <laughs> it's okay. It's a little, little bit sweet for me. Well, it's definitely not champagne. No. <laughs> or cider. Or cider. But um, it's nice. Mm. That's a treat. <laughs> we don't normally get stuff like that. I think I'll go back think, to my yoghurt. I think I might have my chocolat as well. Are we going to say anything helpful? Hang on, keep still. Yeah. Are we going to say anything helpful for these guys? Um, I don't know. What about? What do you want to know? <laughs> Dear Rojo, Rojo. Dear Rojo, how come you moved to France? You quit your jobs and where you lived. Did you survive? Do I look dead? <laughs> so we survived. And we managed to buy some slightly more expensive food. So we have survived. In fact, in the last, um, is it three and a bit months, I've made over 5,000 5, euros. I haven't seen any of it, but... <laughs> yeah, you have. It's been, it's been in the cupboards in the kitchen. Shh, don't tell them where we live. <laughs> anyway. That was a breakthrough. We've survived. Um, we had a little bit of money coming to France. We've talked about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on a minute. It's a different video. Yeah. Other people click on other videos. <laughs> I'll, bet, I'll do a little pop-up card so they can click on the other link. So what should we talk about this time, darling, with our list? Which one do you want? Relationships. Relationships, okay. With each other, with family, with friends, with neighbours, with locals. Which one should we start with? Each other. Each <laughs> other, okay. <laughs> well, we both laugh, so um, we, we haven't fallen out, have we? We're not, no. um, we don't hate each other. <laughs> that was a good it move. Help, it helps if you, you know, get along with someone. <laughs> if you're going to move country. Um, <laughs> and, you know, if you've got a kid like we do, an eight-year-old Heidi. And Fortress you're quite, girl. You're quite committed. You can't decide that you don't like each other. Yeah, because also, behave. for the beginning, before you know many people, it's just you as a family, isn't it? There's no outsiders coming into it very much. So you have to get on. But what you really want to hear is relationships with others. The locals, the French in our case. And we're really chuffed with who we found as neighbours. We've got the most amazing neighbours. Yeah, I mean, we live somewhere where the nearest neighbour is 200 metres away. Um, and there's a few scattered around. And they're all extremely friendly. They've invited us around. We've had food. <laughs> Um, with them and drinks and they've got kids and they play with our daughter and it's all tickety-boo. New Year's Eve party until 4.30 in the morning, 5. Dancing, music um, and then um, Pascal for example, he, he just um, after two minutes of having a chat with me he was like, do you want to have a tour around my house? And I was like, yeah alright then. So he gave me kind of the whole tour and he bought it from kind of a shell, like a really traditional, nothing had changed since it had been built, so it was just kind of this huge flagstone in his kitchen, for example, one big stone, which is basically takes up his whole kitchen, it's amazing, um, and gave us his history like that, and <laughs> his life, and everyone's just so open, aren't they? Yes, that's and the point. And they want to be friendly, and they want to be lovely, and they want to be helpful, and, yeah. you know, make your transition to France easy. You probably find the same thing in Cornwall or the rural England. When there's not a lot of people around, people are generally friendly. Yeah, because for example, um, so Stephanie, she said to me, quite often you might have power cuts or you don't have internet for a while or whatever. 
So you really, you need to help each other when you're in the sticks, because otherwise, you know, like Sandrine, she didn't have water, did she? I don't know, but these things happen, so you have to help each other. Because um, sometimes it takes a while to get things, um, you know, sorted out and fixed in the countryside in France. So you need people, uh, you need the language, and even if you don't have the language, as in my case, I had to learn a lot of French, you have to keep trying, you have to keep being willing to communicate with whoever, however, however bad the language, uh, however much you stumble or fumble with it. Um, um, at first I was a bit concerned about what our mayor would be like, because in France a mayor is an important figure of, um, of the local area. And um, we have a female mayor, and um, <laughs> she also works at the post office. And... Uh, it took me a while to meet her for the first time, but she's really nice. And the other day, because um, we'd put in a, a piece of paper to do with building a little abri type thing on our property, um, and she kind of came personally with the paperwork to our house while Robin was giving a, a drawing lesson, and there were loads of kids milling around and stuff. And uh, we just had a nice long chat, didn't we, really? Oh, the bell's ringing. Um, and... Um, yeah, I can imagine that if you went to a town where maybe the mayor isn't so nice or forthcoming or whatever, it might be trickier. Yeah, or you may never meet the mayor if it's a town. But in these small villages, it's great. Everybody knows each other. Mm. They know what you're up to. They know what car you drive. You know, they know whether you had posts that morning, probably. They know everything. Mm. They know what time you go to bed. What time you... <laughs> they know what you buy at the supermarket. <laughs> So be ready for that. If you go, if you go to little towns or villages, they'll know everything about you, whether you like it or not. So you have to be um, Good. just open. No, you have to be <laughs> open. You have to be. You can't be evil. <laughs> you have to be good because they'll find everything out about you. Um, so being friendly—that's what socialism is. You've got to be community-oriented, be friendly, um, and love everyone. <laughs> And actually, well, that's what we've been doing, and it's great, and it works. It really works. And um, even have... if other people don't love each other, we found that you know, if you love both parties, it doesn't really matter because it... you have your relationship with them separately. And even if they don't get on, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Be honest. Yeah, be honest. So anyway, what's what was the section about? Spirituality. No, or no it's relationships. <laughs> Relationships with each other. Okay. And family. Yeah. And friends and neighbours and locals. Okay. Mm. So, um, yeah, I feel like I've made some quite good friends. And actually, recently with my um, business at the market, I'm getting to know all the market people. And, um, and they're kind of the same everywhere. Uh, so you kind of, I can see how that's going to form more and more relationships as time goes on and the more that I do it. Um, <clears throat> and there's some, some particular people that I really get on well with and have really good banter and, you know, soon I'm going to go around to one of their houses and, you know, and even just... Markets Markets are a really good place to meet people um, and network. And for me, it's helped me sell a few pictures and get possible interest in work. Um, yeah, in south of France or anywhere in France, I guess, markets are really crucial. Yeah. And it's been it's been fun being connect or connecting with people. Mm. Even people that you've just seen in a stand, but if you pass them in a supermarket or anywhere else or in a petrol station, you know, you'll shake hands and chat just because you saw them in the market and they know your face. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's where everyone meets. Mm. And relationships w with my daughter and um, her friends, for example, for the first time, she's, well, she's eight now, when we came she was seven, um, she's, she's formed some really strong bonds with other girls that she didn't really do in England. And um, her social life was much more minimal. minimal. Um, so, for example, she might have a play date once a month or even less sometimes. Or she'd, she'd want to every week, but people wouldn't be there or they'd have so many activities that there wasn't opportunity for, for meeting up and socialising. Whereas here, she just gets on a bike like, right, I'm going to my neighbours, off I go. And she goes on her own and she's got that confidence in herself. Um, and all she does, she maybe passes... A one horse rider, a hedgehog, and maybe a tractor. On her way to the friend's house. It's nice and safe where we <laughs> live. Yeah. 
But that's busy. That'd be a busy day. That's a busy day. Yeah, you don't always see the hedgehog. <laughs> um, but even even at school, you know, it's a small school. So every single one of those kids knows each other and they have a relationship with one another, whether they're really close friends or not. Um, but Heidi likes older kids and younger kids. You know, they all get together. Should we wrap this one up? Yeah. Any, anything, anything else, else you want to say about us? <laughs> Another time. Another time. We have had bumpy moments, haven't we, hun? It's not all rosy. Yeah, so I don't know if we've said this yet, no, but um, <laughs> when, when you're not earning money, you feel tense. So, you know, you've got to get along with your partner, otherwise you take out that tension. Yeah. You know. Or like for me, for example, um, not that long ago, I was um, building up for this really big market that I thought was going to be amazing in Toulouse, and it was a bit of a flop. <laughs> it was a rainy day and it didn't happen really. Um, and I was trying to make loads and loads of garments for that market and I was constantly on it when it came to work and making clothes and sewing and sewing and sewing and non-stop really and um, for quite a number of weeks and family just got bored of it and Robin was like hang on a minute have I got a wife <laughs> and um, we had to sit down and have a chat about it didn't we because um, it wasn't working really and then that cleared the air and now for what a month or so it's all been cool it's all been fine and dandy so yeah you just need to keep the communication going um, because things are so different like Robin at the beginning it was like going suddenly retired and what was he going to do without this, <laughs> no, but without this structure of work of getting up at a certain time coming home at a certain time eating at a certain time going to bed because you know this is going to happen next yes you as, know. A, as a school teacher I used to work to the bell you know, my whole life was pretty much arranged for me in terms of you have to get up, you've got to do this. All these kids are waiting for that, parents are waiting for this. Um, so I had to create my own structures quite early on coming here. And I've been very productive making stuff. But um, Recently, but you have had times when I was, you, no, your I was, priorities and stuff, you couldn't work out what oh, was most it's important. Been a, it's been a struggle knowing how to prioritise... Um, where I put my energy. So I'm putting my energy everywhere, but knowing that there's probably a better, more strategic approach to move forward with. Mm. Um, and that's been something you've had to build yourself because you've never really had to do it before. Mm. So that's been a huge change for you and for us. Whereas Joe just tried any old thing all the time, sometimes wasting energy, but the outcome is that she's become very connected with everybody and that's created more opportunities. So And more money. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, so there you go. You've got to connect again. Relationships, you've got to connect with people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was trying to work things out sort of cerebrally, like how can I move forward and make money? But I just had to get out there and talk to people and tell them that I need to make money, and that would help. Yeah, what can I do? Yeah. So uh, the chatting has got me exhibitions, it's, it's got me um, commissions, you know, it helps just to get out and about. Yeah, and just being seen, being out there on the side of the road with your easel. At the least. He, he gets so many people stopping and talking to him, and that's one of the ways of how he's learnt French, is just from people stopping at the side of the road. Yeah, <laughs> Who is this guy with a hat on and a scarf? If you're watching this <laughs> and you're an artist, don't come to the south of France. It's beautiful here, um, but I'm the artist around here, OK? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that gets me selling anything, is that there's not many artists who do what I do around here. There are lots of artists, but they're not necessarily good. Well, they, they, yeah. I have any of my A-level students who stumble across this and laughing at my beard, whatever you're doing. Um, just know that there's no one down here in the south of France who can draw or paint as well as you A-level students I used to teach. Yeah. Yeah. Wrapping up the relationship chat, and next we're going to talk about something else, and we'll decide in a minute. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you soon.